Ready to enjoy learning English? Little English Episode 7 John Jacob Jingleheimer Shout, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, da 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 da. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, that's my name too. Whenever we go out, the people always shout, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt, da 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 da. The Steadfast Tin Soldier Once upon a time, in a far, far away land, there lived a family and the little boy. For his birthday, he said to his mum, Mummy, mummy, I want tin soldiers. That's what I really want for my birthday, tin soldiers. So his mother said, well, if you behave, if you are a very, very good boy, I will get you a nice box with tin soldiers inside. So this little boy was very happy. Oh, I hope I get tin soldiers. I hope I get tin soldiers. So one day, when it was his birthday, he got a beautiful box with tin soldiers. There were 12 tin soldiers. Mm, they were all very nice with a red hat and all the armor and the gun and the power gun and everything. But one of them only had one leg. I don't know why, but he only had one leg. So the little boy said, hmm, no problem. He will be the wounded soldier, 
the one who was wounded in war. So, okay, so he was playing and he was very happy, but he had to go to bed. His mother said, darling, darling, you have to go to bed. So the little boy went to bed. <sighs> but you know, at 12 o'clock, you know what happens at 12 o'clock. Of course, all the toys begin to play, begin to party. So the tin soldier was looking, looking everywhere. And he thought, hmm, with whom can I play? With whom can I talk? And suddenly he saw this beautiful, beautiful dancer. This beautiful, beautiful dancer who had a beautiful suit and a beautiful skirt, you know, these big dancer skirts. And he thought, oh, isn't she beautiful? And she only has one leg too. And he thought, oh, isn't that nice? She's just like me. She only has one leg like I do. So hopping and hopping and hopping, he got closer and closer to her. And they got talking. They started to talk, they started to talk. And they were really having a very nice time, a very nice conversation. And how are you and what do you like and aren't you lovely? And between you and me, I think they fell in love. I think they were very, very happy. But the dancer had two legs, but her position was a bit different. But she had two legs, not one like the soldier. So they went to bed and at the next morning, the little boy decided to play. But then it was seating time and the mother said, come on, darling, we have to go and eat. And the little boy had left the tin soldier on the window and he went to have lunch. But he didn't know what was going to happen next. There was wind, a lot of wind, a lot of wind. And there was a big, big, big strength of wind. And that soldier fell off the window and he fell and he fell, plonk. And he fell on his head where there was a little bit of sand. And it was so scary for him. And two boys found the soldier, but they were not very nice boys. They said, oh, what's this? It's a tin soldier, but it only has one leg. That's not cool, that's not cool. And the other boy said, you know what? We can create a little boat, you know, with paper, a paper boat, and let's make it sail on this little bit of river from the rain. Let's make it sail. So that's what they did. They got the little soldier, they put it in the little paper boat, and whoo, he started sailing through this little bit of water, through this little river. And you will never know what happened. This got through the sewage, you know, sewage, where there is a lot of mess from all the houses. He got into the sewage and finally he went into sea and into the sea and he started seeing fishes and a lot of different things. But suddenly there was this big, huge fish and that fish was very, very hungry and he went glop and he swallowed the soldier. And the soldier, the tin soldier, was in the fish's stomach. And that was awful. What a shock. What am I doing in here? Help! Help! But nobody could help him. He was inside the fish's stomach. But suddenly that fish saw a worm. You know a worm? A slimy little insect that you use for fishing. So there was a worm and that fish swallowed the worm and went glop. Hmm, but that worm belonged to a fishing rod. You know a fishing rod to fish, that fishermen use to fish. So that fisherman was very happy. Oh, I have a fish, I have a fish. So he got it up and up and up and he was very happy. He had this very, very big fish in his hands and he would sell it at a very good price in the market. So you will never know what happened. Do you know the little boy that we were talking about before? Well, that little boy had a cook and that cook bought that fish. And what do you know? She got home, she cleaned the fish, she cut the fish in half 
And what did she see? She saw the little soldier. The fish had caught it. And there was the tin soldier. Ooh, it was so smelly. Fishy, of course. It was very, very smelly. And he told the little boy, Oh, darling, look, I have found your tin soldier. And the little boy was so happy. Oh, it's fantastic, it's fantastic. Ooh, it stinks. It smells very, very badly. It's fishy. And the cook said, Don't worry, darling. I will clean it for you and you can play with it again. So she cleaned it and washed it with soap, but it was still fishy. It was a bit stinky, you know. So she decided to put it, um, to let it dry beside the chimney. And the dancer saw her tin soldier. You know the tin soldier who, is, who she's in love with? And she went to him and she danced, and she danced, and she danced. And she got to him and she said, oh, my darling, I'm so happy to have you back. And they decided to be together and they were so happy. They wanted to celebrate their love. And they started dancing and dancing and dancing. But they danced so much, so much, so much <gasps> that they both fell into the fire, into the fire of the chimney. So first fell the soldier and then fell the dancer, and they both were there within the ashes. You know, the ashes, the what fire creates, you know, the ashes. And they were all melting, 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 and melting because of the fire. So it's quite sad, really, because the next morning they found a little tin heart, a little, little tin heart and the little bit of pink clothes that belonged to the dancer stuck to the heart. So at least they disappeared together, but it was very, very, very sad. And the little boy cried and said to his mum, where, where is my little tin soldier? And where is my dancer? Where are they? Where are they? Mummy, where are they? And the mummy said, oh, don't worry, darling. We will find them. You know that everything always appears. But of course, they never appeared. So as you can see, this is a bit of a sad story. But you have to think that they disappeared together in love. And I'm sure that somewhere they lived happily forever after. One, two, three. <laughs> This little finger on the right Then I let it go again Why did you let it go? 
Cause it means my finger so Which finger did it bite? This little finger on the right Learn the sky Have you ever looked at the sky at night? The sky is very large and at night, as the sky is dark, you can see all the shiny things very well, like the moon, the moon and plenty of stars. But the stars and the moon are really far away in one place called space. And there, the stars and the moon are around. You can find as well on the space planets. Some of them you can see have a very big circle around called orbit and we live in one of these planets. Do you know the name of our planet? The name is the Earth. And you can sometimes find <laughs> rockets. They travel very fast. And then the astronauts travel in the rockets around the space to discover all the different planets. Maybe one day you can become one of them. Good luck. The Grasshopper and the Ant Once upon a time, there was a grasshopper. Now, I don't know if you know what a grasshopper is. A grasshopper is an insect and he's very long and very thin and green and he jumps about. But this grasshopper didn't jump about. This grasshopper liked to do two things. He liked to sleep and he liked to sing. He thought he had a lovely voice. And all day long, he would walk through the forest singing. And none of the other animals listened to him, but he didn't care. I've got a lovely voice, he said. So, one day, summer came, and the grasshopper saw all of the animals running about in the forest and jumping and playing. And he thought, aha, uh -huh, this is a perfect time for me to show them my lovely voice. And he went into the middle of the forest and there was a little hill and he stood on the hill so everybody could see him. And he went, hey, 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 grasshopper, oh, I'm a grasshopper. And nobody listened to him, but he kept going. And when they didn't listen, he thought, hmm, maybe they don't like my style. I'll change to opera. grasshopper. They still didn't listen. He was a very silly grasshopper. But he kept going and he kept singing and he kept... Until, in among all the animals, he saw a tiny, tiny ant. And the ant was carrying a grain of rice. Now, for you and for me, a grain of rice is a tiny, teeny, tiny little thing. But an ant, who's also very tiny and very teeny, well, for him, it's as big as a mountain. And he was carrying the rice and it was very heavy. But luckily, an ant is very strong. So he didn't have too much of a problem. And he was walking along with the rice and the grasshopper said, Hey, hey, Mr. Ant! Why are you carrying that rice? And the ant said, well, I need it for the winter. Because in the winter we won't have any. And he said, but now it's summer and all the birds are singing and I'm singing. You should listen to me. Hey, listen to this. I love him, grasshopper. Oh, grasshopper. And the ant said, no, 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 no. You're very silly, Mr. Grasshopper. I'm going, I'm going to take the rice home now. Thank you. And he did. He took the rice. And once he got the rice to his house, he went back into the forest and he found nuts and he found peanuts and walnuts and corn and wheat 
and all of the nice things that you and I like to eat. The ants like to eat them as well. And he carried them all very slowly, but without stopping, to his house. And meanwhile, the grasshopper didn't do anything like that. He just stood on his hill and he sang and he danced and nobody listened to him, but he still thought, I have a lovely voice, they just don't understand me. And then, before long, the leaves started to fall from the trees because summer had gone and now it was autumn. So the grasshopper stayed on his hill, singing and dancing, and the ant continued to carry all of the food back to his house. And the grasshopper saw the ant and he said, Hey, Mr. Ant, why are you carrying that rice? You carried it all summer long. And the ant said, because winter is very cold and very long. And I need all of this food to survive until spring, which comes after winter. So he continued to carry it and the grasshopper continued to sing. And before long, all of the leaves had fallen from the trees and the trees had no leaves, and then winter came. And you know what happens in winter, don't you? It's it very cold, and snow falls, and it's very, very cold, and everyone shakes and shivers. And that's what happened to the grasshopper. All of the other animals, who were very intelligent, went into their little houses and closed the doors so they were nice and warm. And the grasshopper, who hadn't done any work in the summer, he didn't have a house to go to and he started to get very sad and very cold and very hungry and he started to sing a very sad song with a harmonica. He went, I don't have any food, I'm so hungry and he walked all the way to the ant's house and he knocked on the door and the ant opened the door and he said yes. And he said, could you help me out, Mr. Ant? I have no food. He said, well, I told you. I told you in the summer and in the autumn, but you didn't listen to me. You just sang and slept and I was working and now I have all of this lovely food and you don't have any. And that's your problem. Goodbye. And he closed the door. And the grasshopper got very scared and he walked over to a tree and the tree had no leaves, it was a very sad tree. And he sat down on the tree and he cried. <laughs> I have nothing to eat. <laughs> and it's very cold. <laughs> now, the ant, who was in his house, looked through the curtains, out the window, and he saw the grasshopper. And the ant was very angry with the grasshopper, but luckily the ant was also a very good ant. So he thought for a bit and he went to the door and he opened the door and he said, Hey, grasshopper, come here. So the grasshopper very slowly, because he was very hungry, walked towards the ant's door. And the ant said to him, I have an idea. What's that, Mr. Ant? said the grasshopper. The ant said, I have a problem, you see, because I have a radio and normally in the winter I like to listen to my music while I eat my food, but my radio is broken. It doesn't work. So if you come in and you sing to me, I will give you food. And next summer you have to come with me and help me carry things because you are bigger than me and you can carry even more and then next winter We'll have lots and lots of food for both of us. And the grasshopper was very happy and he went in and he sang all of his greatest hits. The one that goes, Oh, the never grasshopper. And the other one goes, Oh, the grasshopper. And they became best friends and they had lots of food. And then every summer, the grasshopper could always be seen helping the ant gather his food. Because remember, you have to do your work. If you want to have a good time later on, first of all, you have to do the right thing. And that's what the ant and the grasshopper did, and they lived happily ever after. Oh.